Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In this week's episode, we're going to be covering the Digital Endoscope slash Boroscope Camera, model NTS-150RS by Teslong. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of me here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. In this week's video we'll be covering the new boroscope that I've had for a little while. In several of my videos now I've inputted some boroscope footage of some images from a barrel and inside my action. I had a couple questions about the camera I was using to do that so I thought I would do a quick review going over this camera. For those of you that aren't interested in using this for a rifle application, there's many other applications that we can do that. Or if you're interested in multiple uses for this tool, stick around. We're going to go over several and hopefully give you a good idea of the performance that this model offers. Even though the specific model here is the NTS-150RS, realize that this is actually offered in several flavors. Number one is a 10-foot classic probe, which is honestly, as far as Amazon pricing is concerned, is the cheapest model. That model starts at $89.99. I believe there's some type of coupon available for it as well. If you're talking about a boroscope application, being able to have what we want to call the short focus probe is probably imperative to your application. That's exactly what this model is, the short focus probe application. What does that short focus probe mean? That means that the actual focal length has been adjusted for this particular camera to be focused somewhere between one and two centimeters. So in fact, I actually have a ruler I've printed off and I'm going to show you a picture on the screen to give you an idea of what the actual focal length that you're going to be able to see on this or how far the surface of whatever you're trying to see needs to be away from the camera for it to be in focus. Both the classic and short focus probe come with a 10 foot cable. There is actually one other configuration available with a 16 and a half foot longer probe, which I believe is the same camera as the classic, except it just has a 16 and a half foot cable rather than the 10 foot cable. Anything we're going to talk about specific in this video is going to be reflective of the short focus probe only. And I encourage you to look on Teslong's website if you really want to know any details. However, I will say the information on this specific model is not actually available on Teslong's website. And so I'll try and highlight some of the differences between what they have listed there and what this camera actually does. I don't want you guys to think it's false advertising, but they don't specifically talk about the short focus probe on this model available on website that they are still selling on Amazon. I'll put Amazon affiliate links in the description box below so you guys can go check those models out if you're interested in buying something like this. Something that's relatively new by Teslong, which is a very similar probe to this, except for it doesn't actually come with the camera body. So you actually will need either some type of a computer or phone or tablet to plug into to be able to use that model. But when we talk about resolution specs, I couldn't actually find the resolution specs for the other model. That particular inspection scope is only $50, so significantly lower price than this. However, it wasn't available when I actually purchased this because I've been using this for a little while now. So anyway, without further ado, let's talk exactly about this particular short focus model. What you see on the table is exactly what it comes with. It comes with the inspection camera as well as the 10 foot cable with a short focus probe. I'll put a picture of the close focus probe on your screen so you can get a better idea of exactly what that looks like. And we'll talk a little bit about the dimensions of it as well. The other accessories that come with this is a standard USB cable that you can use to charge this. I believe you could use this to get the pictures and or video off of the camera as well. However, I just take the card out and put it in my card reader, but again, I believe it can be used for that as well. Three other accessories that are very important that come with this is an actual hook, a 45 degree angled mirror, as well as a magnet assembly. I'll put a picture of those close in there so you can actually see them, but essentially you can screw these onto the inspection camera, so if you're trying to go in and pull something out of an area, you can see what you're trying to fish with with the hook. In this particular case, we're going to be talking about going inside a barrel. So the mirror is at 45 degrees, you're going to basically see a 90 degree off axis picture of your barrel. And then the ever popular option, if you'd like drop the screw in a cylinder or something like that, it also has a magnet. Obviously it would have to be a magnetic screw, but you can screw that on to the end of the camera as well be able to see what you're poking at a little bit and it has a strong enough magnet to pick up something of reasonable size that obviously is magnetic. The other thing obviously on the table here is the case. It does come with a relatively nice case and inside is a very nice padded case where this unit can be stored when you're not using it. Obviously an instruction manual is included as well which if you want to know all the details I'm sure you when you pick one up you'll read it. However we're going to go over most of the details with this particular system in this video. 
A couple of key points to talk about right out of the gate. I don't want you guys to think that we're going to get some super high resolution video out of this camera. It is a relatively inexpensive camera. This particular model retails for $129.99. There is a $10 coupon clip that you can do on Amazon right now. For that price point, you really can't be expected to get a 13 megapixel camera down the end of your barrel. In fact, this is actually only a 0.3 megapixel, which doesn't sound very good but it's providing you an image and video resolution of 640 by 480. This is one of the key things that I thought should be brought up. If you actually look at Teslong's website under this NTS150RS model, I believe that they're only listing the specs for the Classic Probe. I don't know because I don't have a Classic Probe model, but they're listing resolution for photos being able to be taken at 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. Video on that particular model is stated at 1280 by 720. This particular model, I don't know if it's specific to the short focus probe, but 640 by 40 resolution is the only resolution that this model will either do video or photography with. That is kind of a positive thing for me because some of these, you can't actually record the live video. This particular model, should you choose to do so, and what I was interested in being able to provide you on this channel, is being able to walk through the barrel. I'll actually try and provide three different calibers to give you an idea of what this camera is capable of, We'll look at something as small as a 223. The advertised width on this probe is actually 5.5 millimeters. For those of you that, use that only speak standard units, that's 0.216 inches. Yes, this will fit down a 223 barrel. It is very tight and is a little bit difficult. One of the things that I will bring up right out of the gate is if you were at all worried about putting anything that could possibly ding scratch down your barrel, this may not be the inspection camera for you. It does seem to have a nice nylon coating. It is metallic around the camera. As long as you're careful, I really don't think you're going to end up doing any damage to your barrel. But if you're super concerned with anything metallic actually touching your bore, this probably isn't going to be the camera for you. But honestly, I don't know what one would be. That out of the way, I'm going to run, just to give you guys an idea what the resolution is going to look like, we'll run uh, the thing down at 223 barrel down and back relatively quickly just to give you guys an idea but I can show you this through a 223 barrel 6.5 millimeter barrel a 30 cal barrel as well as a 338 to give you an idea what a bigger bore might look like let's actually get zoomed in on the on the camera a little bit here and we'll get a little bit closer to the camera and talk a little bit more about the configurations and what you can actually do with it so looking a little closer at the probe on here you can obviously see that this cable is very flexible However, the key things that we want to talk about here is what the configuration of the camera end has to be on when you're using it. To actually go down a 223 barrel, I believe that this thread protector actually needs to be removed. So we'll actually take it off, we'll zero out our calipers a little bit, and we'll see with our thread protector on that our actual width is 0.236 inches, roughly 6 millimeters. So this isn't going to fit down our 223 barrel with that thread protector on. It has to be taken off to achieve that 5.5 millimeter dimension. But with that cap off, we can take this through our 223 barrel. We just have to be careful and straighten this out very, very carefully. It's not as big of a problem on a 30 cal barrel to get this fed down, but you do have to straighten out this reasonably to get it down without scratching it everywhere. Now let's talk about the accessories a little bit. Like we mentioned, we can screw the hook on there if we want to. Not something I've really used so far. The magnet attachment, certainly screw this onto there, have a magnet on the ends. If you want to pick up something magnetic, like the cap, or even something a little bit stronger. It can certainly pick up a screw with no problem. It is a reasonably strong magnet, and so if you are just, if something got dropped somewhere where you need to pick it up, you can take a look through your camera and be able to pick it up reasonably well. But saving the best for last, we're actually gonna talk about this particular guy. This could call a 45 degree mirror combo. What this is allowing you to do, obviously, is see it at a 90 degree angle. We can screw this on here. One of the important things that you need to realize is as we screw this on here, it's actually going to be changing the focal length. Teslong does state that this has the focal length of about one to two centimeters. Using our paper here and placing the, tip, placing the tip in here, I will show you a picture on the screen of what the image I can take basically on the ruler is so you can get an idea of what the focal length is. And you can see that you're just coming into focus just before one centimeter and you can see fairly well a little past one and a half centimeters and it's, the image is getting a little bit fuzzy past two centimeters. So it doesn't have a very wide depth of field, but having that close focus ability is imperative if you're trying to see inside your barrel bore. And that's exactly what this does. So you can actually screw this on a little further and it'll take a little bit of trial and error, but you can adjust this in and out on the threads or to be able to get this in focus inside your barrel. By moving that back and forth, it kind of increases or decreases your focal length. However, you can see since we do have to use this adapter, you're not going to be able to get this particular device through your 223 barrel. 
With our calipers, we can see that this measures somewhere just under 0.25 inches. Something like a 6.5 is about the smallest caliber you're going to be able to use and actually use the 90 degree adapter. You'll be able to see straight down with the camera. You won't be able to use the 45 degree unless you have a somewhere around a 6.5 millimeter caliber. 0.26 for you those that don't prefer the metric system. Not to confuse this issue at all, but that might be one of the reasons why you might want to think about actually buying the model that does not have the screen. Not only being cheaper, it actually has that built into it. And the best I can tell, they are claiming that that actually has even even, even smaller head on it. And it's at 0.2 inches or 5 millimeters. The overall length of that camera is, is actually only 40 inches. So as long as, if you're, if you're going through your action to look, as long as your, your total barrel and action length is going to be less than 40 inches, you should be able to fish that down there on a bolt action. Well, if you're not able to fish straight from the back, you might be going through the crown of your barrel anyway. Either way, that's for you to decide. You have to be responsible for your own gun care. Ask me any questions that you like in the comment section below, and I'll try to get you a reasonable answer. One other thing that we'll try and show you real quick, I'd love to show you guys how the display actually works. So let me show you a little bit of picture of what you're actually looking at now through the lens camera. So you can see that the probe is actually just pointed at our 45 degree angle adapter at a rough distance of just a little over a centimeter away. Let me actually shoot a picture of the screen for you guys to give you an idea of what you can actually see. So hopefully you can see there's a relatively clear color picture on the screen. Lots of actual detail. You can see the mirror. You can kind of see the thickness of the mirror honestly pretty good. I might put a screenshot on there, but I really want you guys to get an idea of what the display is actually going to provide you. They don't really do a great job specifying what the resolution is. Like I said, the recording video on this is going to be 640 by 480. Um, they tell you it's a three and a half inch LCD color display. It's got a 2600 milliamp hour battery. They claim somewhere between five and six hours of battery life. I'm not sure it has that much battery life. I don't really plan on doing a battery life test on. I will say it seems to have an insane amount of battery life for something like this that I would expect. I would expect just a couple hours to be plenty for me. It does have that USB cord so you can plug it in and charge it very easily. It seems to charge relatively quickly. I can't imagine the situation where I would need five to six hours of battery life, but that's what it claims if you're interested. It's lasted for whatever I need to look at with plenty of battery life to spare. Hopefully you can see it does give you a relatively good image. Kind of go through the modes real quick just so you can kind of see. The mode button on here simply switches the icon from obviously from the video camera that's currently on there to a picture of a camera. The up arrow actually zooms in a little bit if that's what you wanted to do. I'm not sure how effective that's going to be at being able to get any closer to what you're looking for, but you can zoom in on it. The other button actually rotates it around. One of the things is very difficult to control what's up and down on here. So if you're trying to change your screen, you can actually rotate the image around the screen to get it where you want. The thing on here is the settings. You can set your date and time. You can turn the timestamp on and off on the image if you want. The language that's available, if you want to turn it automatically or format the card. This particular unit comes with an eight gig card. I don't really know how long you can record on that for. It's certainly recording in only 640 by 480. The video files aren't very large. I guess it depends on what you want to take video of. I'm fairly certain that you could take some extremely long videos with this if you really wanted to. I don't know what that would exactly be for, but draw your own conclusions. I'm not going to tell you how to use your camera if you decide to pick one of these up. One other thing that we'll highlight real quick is the connector on here. I'm not sure if this is a specific standard connector, but I have seen other monitor units that look very similar to this. And I know that there are, you can change this probe out if you wanted to and put one of the other probes in here. I don't think that even if you bought this entire model, you would be limited to this. If you want to pick up one of the other probes to use with it, you could still use the head unit with a different probe as long as it had the same pinout. Um, I encourage you in that case to look on Teslong's website to look at the compatibility, but it appears to me that the same head unit is used in a lot of different locations. It's just that particular connector. Lifting up the side here, you can see that that is where the SD card goes, as well as the where the micro USB charge port is. Like I said, this comes with an 8 gig model. The manual does say you can take up to a 32 gig card if you think the 8 gig card is not up to standard. In the description box below, I'll cover affiliate links. If you wanted a longer cable, the long probe is only going to come in a standard focal length with that 16.5 foot cable. This one is a 10 foot with this, the short focus probe. Like I said, I think that short focus probe is going to be imperative if you're trying to use this unit for a boroscope and actually be able to get anything out of it. I do think some of the negative comments that are listed there are because people bought the wrong model, hoping that the cheaper model was going to be able to be used for a boroscope. So one of the big things that I really wanted to cover is, does it make sense to even get the monitor? 
in hindsight, there are actually a couple big advantages to going with the cable only option. Number one being $50, it's certainly cheaper than this model and not by an insignificant amount. Most people have some type of a computer that they can record on. The biggest issue for me in that is always worried about software and how long am I going to be able to use it. As long as this unit is still working, I'm assuming I'm gonna be able to record files to it be able to pull those off of my computer and insert in the videos the way that I intended to when I originally bought this unit. One of the big advantages to that though, however, is the actual dimension of that with its 45 degree adapter on there so you can see at a 90 degree angle, it's actually claiming 0.2 inches on that device or five millimeters. So you should still be able to use and get that side view in a 223 caliber rifle barrel where you absolutely just can't do that with this model. Like the video I showed you before, you can certainly put the inspection scope down the barrel. You just can't get that 90 degree view of it until you step up to something like a 6.5 millimeter barrel. One specific limitation of the cable only model, it specifically states it does not work with iPhone or iPad, something over Android 4.4. It has to be OTG or on the go compatible. Your phone might be OTG compatible. It might be a setting in your phone if you're trying to use your phone as a display unit. Most people don't seem to keep their phones very long these days, and I would always be nervous making sure that whatever software that you had to have to work with that would always be working on your phone. Long-term compatibility may or may not be an issue, but I know as long as our video device is still going to be working here, if I get a new phone, it's not going to make me lose my ability to use my boroscope. Hopefully Tesla will support that software for a long period of time, but I, or there might also be another third party app that it could be used with to be able to actually get that video. The other downside with that cable only model, it doesn't really state the best I can tell of what the actual resolution that that records in. Big downside is you really don't know what resolution is. Some people insinuate that it actually is a relatively reasonably good image. So I don't know what the resolution is, but the pictures they have on there certainly make it look reasonable, especially at that $50 price point. It appears both devices are gonna have this similar bendable cable. Just obviously this one is 10 foot long. The one on the cable only model is 40 inches long, though obviously it does come with an extension USB cord so you can plug it into your phone. It does look like it comes with a reasonably long USB cable to plug into the end of it to be able to use it at a reasonable distance. Anyway, if you guys have been looking for a reasonably priced boroscope, this might be something you want to consider. If you guys have a better option, I'd love to know what it is in the description box below. If you guys are interested in picking one of these models up on Amazon, I'll have them listed in the description box below. I'll very clearly label them. The short focus model, a classic model. I really only recommend the classic model if you're looking for just general use. I think that you're gonna be disappointed if you're trying to look through the barrel of a rifle with that classic non-short focus model. And the other one I'll put in the link in there is the cable only model. If you guys have an Android phone and wanna use that, or it does say it's compatible with a laptop computer. If you wanna be able to plug a laptop into it and run that in and out of your barrel, that might be the option for you. If you guys are really, really interested in seeing that, um, let me know in the comment section below too. Maybe I will pick one of those up and review it if you guys have any interest on, on that. But otherwise, I'm relatively happy with this. It does what I need it to do. I can't say that it completely blows me away what it's capable of. It does provide me some information that I certainly couldn't get before. If I want to go pick up a rifle and look to see what, give me a general idea of what the barrel condition is, I can certainly do that. Am I going to be able to see every scratch or every indentation in it? Maybe not as, as much as I would like. Even if you guys aren't in the market for a boroscope today, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please post those in the comments section below. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button, turn the notifications so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you back next week, and until then, stay safe in small groups.